So, uh, I've procrastinated for too long. Um, I... There we go. I've procrastinated for far too long. So today, well, this week, I'm finally doing it. I'm finally making a sculpture of the fourth dimensional cube. I practice only one form of art, and that is the art of magic. Now, I don't want to be misconstrued as disrespectful, or rude, or downright, look, my ego is bigger than yours is. The, the, the real reason I wanted to make this, the real reason I wanted to say this is because... In thousands of years that this form of art has been around, nobody has ever taken the time to question that what we're doing isn't the right thing to do. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, how is the sculpture and the art of magic related? And to that, I want to say, well, keep watching and you'll find out. The way modern magic exists today, the way I see it going, um, I I see the art of the thespian. I don't see the art of the magician. Any magician that you ask for advice or anything of the sort will always tell you that your performance is what sets you different. But if that was the case, then how is it different from theater? The performance to me seems as if, seems like a lazy excuse to say, hey, you can still continue doing the same tricks, but just do it different. And, and that doesn't make sense to me because that is not where the art of the magician lies. The best sculpture I can make out of clay is a snake. The art of the magician is not in how do you present an illusion. The art of the magician is the illusion itself. How do you convincingly create an illusion? There are three, three main problems with modern magic. I have a feeling that the, the clay is not gonna work for what I'm trying to do with it. Number one, puzzle. So I got new, new, new materials to make my sculpture out of. Number two, for sale. I don't wanna get to it now because it's just too much to do and it's already like, 7.35, I also have to go to work. Um, so, I'll continue this tomorrow. And number three, the invisible art. Oh, it's on, uh, good morning. So today is March 31st, 2021. It's also my sister's birthday. After I made those cubes of uh, clay last night, I realized that uh, maybe the approach that I'm, maybe the approach to this illusion is not the right approach. Hopefully changing materials would change the approach. Puzzle. Some spectators view magic as a puzzle that they need to solve. Now, it's not something on the magician's end that you could do to do something about it, but rather, magicians don't foster that. If there is a spectator that looks at magic as a puzzle and tells you theories, I think it's the magician's right, and it's the magician's responsibility to tell them whether they're right or wrong. I think it's up to the magician to then foster that within the spectator. Maybe they'd make amazing magicians. At one point in time, all of us looked at a magic trick and tried to figure out how it worked. 
before we were even magicians. When we became magicians was when we figured it out almost every single time. You say you painted a beautiful piece of impressionist art and one of the people looking at it looks at it and goes, oh my God, I never thought you could do something with those particular brush strokes. I never thought that you could do something with the brush like this. A painter would look at that and go, yes, you can go try it. But a magician would go, no, that's not true. Get out of here. I think that that's, that's stupid. I think we should foster the spectators who go, that's a puzzle. I want to solve it. Because those people, those spectators would make amazing magicians. The second problem with magic is for sale. I got this styrofoam cutter, but this, the medium that I'm using is dry foam, so it doesn't work as well. You can go into Google and say magic tricks for sale, and chances are websites will pop up that do just that. And nobody, while well, even on checkout, nobody was like, oh, tss, this one cut through it. It's always felt weird to me when I would buy a magic trick and perform it for someone who doesn't know that it's not my trick. And got myself these. These are, these are the material that I was looking for all along, but it just sucks that I had to go so far away from where I live to get these. Because to them, it's the first sort of interaction with magic they've had and they immediately assume that I've come up with it. So should I perform that? I don't think I should. Because of that dry foam fiasco, I this thing is now gone until Thursday. I should be hanging the sculpture today, but instead I'm stuck making it. The way magic stands today and the way people are promoting it is not solely with the intention to help people express, but rather it's 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 the inverse. It exists to impress. And I hate that. It's like if Van Gogh sold video instructions on how to paint a starry night. I also have this as a backup. You can too paint your own starry night, but just use different colors. That's what magic is today. Thank God I didn't go with my original design of fucking Arduinos and servos, because if I did, this would have been a nightmare. Uh, but I guess I'm gonna save that one for like a bigger installation somewhere down the line. But anyway. Now this does not promote the art of magic. This does not promote the art of illusion. This promotes the art of the thespian. This is not magic at that point. It is theater. How are you presenting this thing that is given to you in your way? Like that's not magic. It becomes theater. The third problem with magic is the invisible art. What I like to say is that when a painter paints a painting, after the painting's done, you can still see the brush strokes on the canvas, and so you can appreciate the brush strokes for what they are. But for magicians and for magic, no brush strokes. Because if you see them, chances are they're not very good. People don't understand how they should appreciate the art form. Now to address all three of these problems, I've decided that from this point on, I will perform exclusively magic in the studio environment.
where I want to take magic is to a spot somewhere else. First thing I want to do is move it from where it is into a place where it's never been before. When you do magic in the studio environment, you're forced to do magic without the magician. And as a result, it gives you an opportunity to bring people into the process of the magician. The process of the magician is no different from the process of the sculptor or the process of the painter. The only difference is, while all of these art forms will start at the very beginning, the art of the magician starts at the very end, and then we work backwards. I mean, think about it, right? Like, you you hear all these stories about these wonderful magicians like Jean-Eugène Corbeau-Audin, uh, Harry Houdini, Alexander Herman, all these amazing historical magicians. What if you could walk into a museum and see their original pieces of work from the day they created it? That is where I want magic to go. I want magic to exist without the magician because those two things don't need each other to exist. This is not an April Fool's joke, so the video that I'm about to make, the video that's going to be up on Sunday about the art of magic, I thought it would really benefit from a sculpture that I had in mind that I wanted to so make. Here's part of the process that you, Instagram, is going to see, but YouTube won't. I'm making a sculpture out of cubes, and the thing with these cubes is that each and every one of them will end up floating. Miraculous. I've given way too much out already, so uh, I'm excited for the Sunday video. I'm more excited for tomorrow because the sculpture is going to be complete tomorrow. So far, I just have three cubes at the corner of my room. So I thought this would be done today, but uh, it's not even close to what I have in mind. So uh, it is what it is, but like I'm still left with four more. Uh, I can't make the perspective illusion because I, I have all the cubes as the same size, so I had a different idea for the design, and um, I don't know. I guess one more day. Holy poop, you guys! I don't think I don't think I'll have the sculpture ready by Sunday, at least not the final one. I will have a version of it, but it's not the it's not the sculpture, so I don't know if I should do it. I definitely should. I'll think about this one. New idea. I'm, I think I'm going to cut new squares, new cubes all together. Uh, I have a lot of styrofoam left, so I can do that. Um, and then I'm going to make all of them different sizes, but I'm going to go exponentially shorter. You'll see what I mean in the video. And um, yeah, that, 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 that should give me the final sculpture that I'm looking for. I think we're I think we're straying away from what the what magic is. The reason why magicians were always at the forefront of technology in the early 1900s were because we were inventors, not performers. We would invent. We would place so much more of an importance on inventing new stuff and not just being able to perform it. I think we've we've lost our way. I can't build this alone. Uh, and Winston, it'll take too long to train Winston to do what I need help with, so, uh, it's, uh, it's not exactly the image I imagined it was gonna be, but it looks kinda nice. So, uh, what do you say, my lovely assistant? Oh, it was great. Uh, I had fun. And, uh, I want to get us back on track, so I hope... I hope this video helps. And I think the big question at this point is, does this form of illusion express wonder or, or instill the feeling of wonder in people? How's it going? It's going good. Whoa. What? Yeah? You like that? Uh, here's the fun part. If you walk up close to it and you align this, this and this, it forms a play button. Wait. This is cool. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Yo, that's dope. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, does this inspire wonder? 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Right. I would say that yes, it does inspire wonder. Yeah, yeah. like as a non-magician, looking at it. Uh, it's definitely cool. I definitely think that it's it's a neat little work in space that you've done. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. I really like this, dude. Nice really? job. Thank you. Hell yeah. Spent all week on it. <laughs> dude, fuck yeah. I, I like it. Really cool stuff. Thanks for showing me this. Yeah, of course. Good work. Thank you. This is fun, man. This makes me want to create more stuff. Yeah? Yeah. Dude, I'm glad. You got any more to show, like, in the future and stuff like that? I'll, I'll probably know. make a lot more. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. Cool. This guy's good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, take care, dude. Yeah, you as well. Andy, have a good one. You too. All right, have a good one, dude. Cool, take care. Thanks for showing me that. Of Hopefully course, thanks for coming by. Now, who am I to tell you any of this? Who, are, who am I for you to listen to what I have to say? I'm a nameless nobody. I've done nothing. I'm at the start of my career. I'm still early into this stuff. So you could either take my advice and create something brand new that nobody's ever seen before. Or you could just ignore it and then eat your words five years from now. Because I'm telling you, I created this work. I'm proud of this work. And I'm so glad that I get to do this work. Hopefully five years from now, this work lives in museums that I never thought it could. No magician would have thought that it could. I hope that it does. Because I am not out here to destroy this art that I love. I want nothing more than to take it to places where it's never been before. And I believe that this is the first step to doing just that. Thank you very much.